people think of ransomware as somebody taking your data live and locking it down and giving you a key, a key back for ransom. And it is so much more because all the things they had to do to get the ransomware and all your data and exfiltrate it and get those controls in place were happening long before they hit that button to start ransoming things. And then when they stole your data, they're coming back and saying, I'm going to ransom this copy of the data, even though you got your key back. Then they're going to go sell that to third parties. I think if you go back a few years ago, it was, um, you know, the consumer clicking on an unpatched Microsoft laptop in their email and locking up their computer, maybe going out to their email and sending out copies of that email that they clicked on to all their contacts. So it's evolved, evolved from like really like a, like a direct to consumer product. More to like a you know direct to business product now. When you look at ransomware and how the entire threat model works, they're coming in, they're compromising your security, they're getting into your ID systems, rootkitting your systems, stealing data in a stealth mode, and then they're also doing an entire examination of what your cyber insurance look like, how much can you afford, what's the perfect ransom number that's not too high or too low to go after these guys. Sandra asks, is it getting more difficult to acquire cyber insurance today than this time last year? I can assume it's just more expensive, yes? It's both. The questions are more detailed. And instead of just saying, is your data encrypted in transit and in re at rest, is it, you know, where is it stored? Who accesses it? How does it access? How many people, how many people have privileged access to it? Like last year, you had insurance companies with some major losses. And so now, you know, they are starting to audit like a big four when it comes to re-upping these policies. And here's a good question from Hadas. Email is the largest threat entry point for ransomware. With all the tools available for communications, why not really focus on retiring email? Is retiring email the answer? No, because this is a revenue generating business and they're going across any vectors. Really, the attack is on the data itself and that's the one common denominator. Email is just another transport. A business is never gonna agree to shut their email down um, and, and security's job is to support the business. And the other thing I would say is if you think about ransomware as just an exploited vulnerability or an exploited misconfiguration, they're everywhere. So, so, so email is just one particular vector but even if you shut it down, there's, to Elliot's point, they're going to come in another way. I think we're missing a facet here is why a, data, uh, it's a company would want to have all that kind of data. It's because when you make a claim, they're going to want to fight that claim. If you have to provide all that, that gives them legal evidence to make their case as to why you didn't do what you had to do. So you're paying mm -hmm. for insurance premiums. They're making revenues. And then you're also having to supply them with the out on paying out during an incident. This isn't just them trying to make an assessment on actuary tables and what the premiums are. This is them preloading their ability to deny your claim. Welcome to the Department of Yes, where no request is ever rejected. I'm going to need you to fill out this vendor security questionnaire before I can send you payment during a <laughs> <laughs> ransomware negotiation. That's actually actually a really good idea because it's not that they're going to do it, but they're going to be like, wait, what now? And just completely throw them off of their negotiation skills. If they actually fill it out, you'll get actually insight into who they are. This is a good question from Phil Wolf. You know, there's ransomware as a service. What do you think the next evolution is from that? Maybe ransomware as a service does like the Mary Kay model where they recruit other companies and they've got like this entire platform they each take a cut of, which is actually what some of them do right now. And, you know, we've got the great recession going on. A lot of people are disgruntled with where they're working. And mm -hmm. I think there's opportunity for ransomware gangs to tap into those disgruntled employees. Think about corporate espionage, but, it, but instead the ransomware gang sends one of their gang members to get employed by the company. Chad and Kevin, you are arguing with each other as to why your idea is worse than the other person's idea. Um, so we're asking criminals um, to give us good advice and assurance that they're not on the OFAC list and things like that. So we're trusting criminals to be honest with us. Mine is obviously worse because I've lost all my negotiation power because I've literally told them, here's how you just get my money. I don't even need to transfer it to them. Uh, where Chad's was, give me all the ways you hacked into my system um, with this security vendor and I'm gonna be able to protect myself later. I think that what people need to be paying attention to is that they're thinking of, oh, if I get somebody to launch ransomware, I'm encrypting my, they're, they're encrypting my current data. What they're not really paying attention to is they're gonna come back for more. They easily compromised you and stole your data in the first place. The data set they took already is just the first one. Phase two and phase three is where they're going to take the stuff they stole anyway and ransom that to you and extort you for that. Then they're going to ignore that and sell it to third parties. 
because then that's where the vast majority of the revenues are. And I think what people aren't looking at is it's not the first initial act. It's all the follow ons. And how are you going to track back so they don't continue to do this to you? So look, ransomware is not going to go away anytime soon. They're making a lot of money. Unfortunately. And then, and then, and then hackers are going to do whatever they do to make money. It's a great money regenerator. So what do you do? Remove the revenue. Take it down to the bottom denominator. Make your data smart. And then you're able to see who's trying to access it, when, where, and how, but more importantly, controlling it no matter where it goes. If you can do that, your posture against ransomware has exponentially increased and your capabilities to control it have exponentially increased. Stop fighting the wave. Protect data itself at the data level.